In this problem, Alex is trying to make a table out of a big long tree trunk that's 8 feet long with a diameter of 3 feet. And one way he can make this is by uh, doing a long cut that goes across the tree trunk like this. So when he makes this long cut, it's going to uh, expose two pieces. It's going to create two pieces. That would be piece number one and piece number two. But the flat part of both of these pieces will create a rectangle. That's going to be the shape. Uh, and since it's a table, and if you're eating on a table, these would be like the surface areas that you'd be eating on. So imagine this is your first rectangle, and then uh, this is going to be your other one for your second half. Okay, These are going to be identical. Um, now, we want to figure out the surface area. Well, the tree trunk that we started with was 8 feet long. So from this point to this point, we could say that that's going to be 8 feet. And then the tree trunk also had a diameter of 3 feet. So from this point to this point, that's going to be a total of 3 feet. All right, so then um, from this part to this part, we could say that that's going to be 3 feet as well. So now we have to come up with the surface area for this rectangle. Well, that's going to be length times width. So all we have to do is take 3 multiply it by 8 and that's going to give us 24 remember that's in feet and it's the area so it's feet squared well because these two rectangles are identical this one's also going to be 24 feet squared and then we add those two surface areas together because it's going to be one big long table so 24 plus 24 is equal to 48 feet squared and this is going to be your total surface area if you cut that tree trunk in half long ways. Now that's one situation. Um, he also says that he wants to try to uh, cut this in five shorter cuts. So um, let's get rid of all this, this stuff here. And now I'm going to make uh, five cuts. So that's going to be my first one, my second one, third one, fourth one, and then fifth one. So that's five cuts. So it's going to uh, create six pieces of wood. It's going to be, uh, this one is your first one, the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth, and sixth. So we're going to have six pieces of wood laying on the ground. And then he's going to want to organize these pieces uh, all in a row so that it creates one big long table. So uh, let's say this is going to be the first um, circular piece right there and actually it's going to look like a very short cylinder because this would be like the height of the cylinder right here and then this uh, the circle part right here which represents the face of the tree trunk that's going to be the top of the uh, which would be the eating surface I guess you'd say and then we need uh, what there's six of them so we need five more and these are not going to be perfect but I'm going to do my best to put um, six circles here in a row. So that's what, five, and we need one more. So six. Now, remember, it's all coming from the, uh, the same tree trunk, and it has a uniform thickness, so uh, all these circles right here will have the same diameter, and the diameter we know is going to be three feet. So from that point to this point is going to be three feet. And that's the same for all these. Now, if you recall, the area of a circle is going to be pi times radius squared. Now, we're not given the radius, but we are given the diameter. And diameter is going to be double the radius. So to get the radius, all you have to do is take the diameter, which is 3, and divide that by 2, which gives me 1.5. So then from the center of each one of these circles to the edge, which is the radius, is going to be 1.5 feet. So now I could plug that into my formula for area. So that's going to be uh, 3.14. We'll use the approximation for pi times my radius, which is 1.5. And we're squaring that. That's going to be 7.065 feet squared. Now, that's the surface area for this first uh, I guess circle right here. Um, and that's going to be multiplied by 6 because we have 6 of them, right? 
So we're going to take 7.065, multiply this by 6, which gives us 42.39. So if we add up all these surfaces, we've got 42.39 feet squared, which is going to be a smaller surface area than what we did first of all, or like the first way when we, we made that long cut going across here. So it's better that he has more of a traditional looking table with um, two big long rectangles combined. Okay, now on to this problem. And this problem could be very tough. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. It involves a, a candle company that's trying to create a candle that has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed. So that's going to be standard. We, we can't deviate from that. Um, it, our candle is going to have a face or a base of an isosceles right triangle. So that is depicted right here. This is going to be your isosceles right triangle. Um, what else do we know? Oh, we need to minimize the surface area. So um, whatever we do here, uh, we have to design our, can uh, our candle, I'm sorry, our candle so that our dimensions m uh, minimize this entire surface area. Now let's come up with a big long equation for surface area. So we'll say SA for surface area, and this is going to equal what? Um, we have both of these triangle faces, right? So we have to come up with the area of both triangles. Okay. Plus, so then we're going to add in also the area of this big face right here. Okay. The one that I'm, I'm coloring in right here, we want the area of that big face. So area of big face, we could say. All right, now I'm going to get rid of that. And then we also want the area of this, this bottom part right here, OK? That area right there. And then we also want the area of this, this back part, too, right? So those areas are going to be the same. Uh, the dimensions will be will be the same for those two rectangles. Um, so I'm going to say adding the um, area of smaller faces. Well, let's first find the area of one of these triangles. Now. It's an isosceles right triangle, so we're going to say that this angle is congruent to this angle, which means that this side right here is also congruent to that side. So then we'll just call this left side here x, and then this bottom one x as well. Well, the area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height, so we're going to write down 1 half times our base, in this case, is this x right here right which is x and then our height is this x right here so it's going to be x times another x now remember that we have two of these triangular faces so we have this one right here and then this back one so we're going to take our area for one triangle and we have to multiply that by two and then we get our area of both of the triangles now we have to find the area of the big face and that's going to be this part right here, right? So let me get rid of all this. In the area of this triangle, I'm sorry, this rectangle, this big rectangle, is going to be length times width. So um, let's call this long side here D for the depth of this, this candle. So it's going back that far. And then uh, the other side right here we could call uh, H, since this is going to be the hypotenuse for this right triangle. So the area of this, uh, this big face is going to be h times d. So I'm going to add in h times d here. Okay, And then I want to add in the area of the two smaller faces. So this bottom rectangle down here, the length times width is going to be this x times this d. Okay, So I'm going to write down x times d. 
And then we also have this one in the back, which is going to be an identical rectangle. So we're going to take x times d and multiply it by 2, since we have two of them. And that's going to be the equation that represents surface area. Now, we need to find the minimum surface area, right? So um, right now, what we could do is just graph it and look for the minimum. But the problem here is that we, we don't have just x's. We have other variables. We have this h here, and then we also have a d here and a d there. We want to get rid of those. So we have to come up with equations for uh, h and d or equations that involve h and d, solve it for h or d, and then substitute it in to get rid of those. So um, let's move on to that step. Let's go back to the problem. We know that we have a volume of 500. So let's use a formula for volume, which is going to be v equals, um, it's going to be the area of the base, which would be the area of this triangle, and we know that to be 1 half times base times height, and the base is x, and the height is x. So that's going to be 1 half times x times x. And then for the volume of a triangular prism, we know that it's area of base times the height. So the height here would be d, right? So that's multiplied by d. And this is going to be the volume for this particular uh, triangular uh, prism. So uh, because we know that the volume is 500, I'm going to get rid of this V here and add in this 500. So here we go. Alright, now if we could solve for D, we could plug that expression in for D right there and that would knock it out here and here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we want to get D by itself, so I'm going to multiply this right side by 2. Uh, 2 times 1 half uh, would cancel out that 2. I'm sorry, it would cancel out that 1 half. And then this side gets multiplied by 2 as well. So the left side is going to be 1,000, which equals x times x, which is x squared times D. To get D by itself, we're going to divide out this x squared. So that goes away. Divide out x squared from this left side. So finally, we're left with d, which equals 1,000 divided by x squared. So that's all good. Okay, I want to plug that in for this d and this d as well. Okay, so that's going to knock out that variable, and we're just going to be left with this h here. So what equation could we create with an h? Well. The h is involved in this right triangle here, and I'm going to bring in the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be x squared, because it's going to be one of these legs, plus the other leg squared, which is this x squared, and that's going to equal the hypotenuse squared. And just like we solve for d here, we want to solve for h here. So to get rid of this uh, the squaring over here, I'm going to take the square root of this right side, which means we also have to take the square root of the left side. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I have now the square root of x squared plus 2x, I'm sorry, x squared plus x squared is going to be a 2x squared. And that's going to equal now h. And if we simplify this left side here, we know that we can't do anything with the square root of 2, but the square root of x squared is just going to be x. So we have the square root of 2 times x, which equals h. Now we have an expression for h, and we have an expression, or I'm sorry, an equation involving d. Okay, I'm going to clear out some room here. I'm going to erase some things and then move my equation for d and h over here to the right side. Okay, now that that's all cleared out, I'm going to plug in what I need to plug in. So uh, on this left side, I have surface area equals. Um, now, 2 times 1 half is going to uh, cancel out here, and we're just going to be left with x times x because that goes away. So I'm left with x squared plus h, and h down here we know is x times the square root of 2 times d, and that's going to be 1,000 
over x squared plus we've got 2 times x times d so we bring in the expression that is equal to d so that's 1000 divided by x x squared so that's our big long equation for surface area all we have is x's so we can go ahead and graph that and figure out what the minimum y value is going to be which will be the minimum surface area and uh, wherever that minimum y value is we have to look to see what the x is and that's going to be the x that represents these two legs here in our triangular base of this candle now we're going to jump into the TI Inspire software and we're going to use it to graph our equation here to find the uh, the minimum for our surface area so let's go ahead and add in a graph and I'm going to type in my equation to graph it on the calculator. Okay, now before I hit enter and graph this, I want to make sure that I have a multiplication sign between everything that I'm multiplying because if you don't have it, sometimes the calculator will give you some goofy air. So um, make sure that you have one between the x and the square root of 2 right here, and then make sure you have one between the square root of 2 and this fraction, and then make sure you have one between the 2 and the x, and then the x and this part in parentheses. Now when you hit enter, it's going to graph. So now it's graphed, but we don't see anything. So we have to tweak our window a little bit so that we can actually see what's going on. And I'm going to adjust the window uh, by going to menu and then window zoom and then number one, window settings. And I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Now, um, X represents my uh, sides of the triangle, right? So there's no way that it could be negative. So I'm going to plug in zero for that X minimum. And then, I don't know, how, how long could the, the length of these triangles be? Uh, I'm going to say no more than maybe 25, so I'm going to plug in that. Um, I'm not going to have a negative for my Y, so I'll plug in 0. And then I'll make a, a really big Y value here. We'll go up to 1,000. And then I hit OK. And there we go. I see my, my graph. This means more to me. Okay, and all we need to do is find the minimum value. So the minimum is going to be happening somewhere around here. So I'm going to go to menu and then analyze graph and then to minimum. And this will be uh, giving me the minimum value here. It says lower bound. So we move to the left of the minimum and click enter. And then we move to the right of the minimum where it says upper bound. I click enter again. And there is my minimum value of 429 but the X is what we really want the X represents the uh, the dimensions for that base of the triangle okay so now we have, we have this we go back into my work and figure out the dimensions of this candle now that we know our X value is 12 we know that this side of our triangle is going to be 12 and our unit is centimeters we know that this side of the triangle is going to be 12 centimeters and then we need to figure out what our H value is and all we have to do is plug in 12 for this X down here so the square root of 2 times an X value of 12 is going to equal H and if I throw that in my calculator I'll get about 16.97 centimeters so I have the dimensions of my base, my triangular base. And now we just need the height of this uh, candle. So we need to plug in our x for this x down here. So it's going to be 1,000 divided by x squared. So our x is 12, and we're squaring that. So this is going to be 1,000 divided by 144 which is going to be about 6.94 centimeters. So the dimensions of this candle will have a base that is a triangle that will be 12 
by 12 by 16.9 centimeters and then it's going to have a height of about 6.94 centimeters. All these dimensions uh, will give us a candle that has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed but it's also going to minimize the amount of surface area that is on this candle so it's going to um, minimize the amount of uh, packaging that we need the logistics department to wrap around this candle.